More than likely, if you're watching this and you think you're a hard gainer, you're not a hard gainer. You do things like not eating breakfast until 3 p.m. If you do eat breakfast early in the morning, you do things like you eat the biggest, heaviest, starchiest, highest fiber option that you can select. And then you take three bites of it and wonder why you're full. That's something I commonly hear from hard gainers all the time. Well, I eat a couple bites in the morning and then I can't eat anymore. You need to do things like look up and see what you can eat that digests quickly, that you like, and that you can implement consistently into your diet. The earlier that you eat in the day, the more that you're gonna be able to eat throughout the course of your day. It's not that you have a low appetite, it's just that you don't pick the right food options that work for you. Work with a dietitian, consult them in terms of how to make a meal plan that works for you, and then just be consistent. But you don't have a fast metabolism, you're not some special snowflake that can burn a million bajillion calories, if you tally up what you eat, it's very likely that you're eating around 2,000, 2,200 calories. You're not a hard gainer. All right, so that was the opinion piece. As always, let me know how you feel about the opinion piece. Just be cordial, don't act like a nerd, express some social skills. We're gonna start with Wafer. He had a great question about fasting. So he says, I'd like to see a video on fasting. I know you've talked about it before, but fasting is a great tool and has helped me control calories as much as you can do without counting in the past. I also like to hear your thoughts on long-term fasting. My own anecdotal evidence is that it's pretty great. So I don't dislike fasting, just like I don't dislike really any particular exercise because every exercise has utility. Some exercises have more utility, yes, less utility, and thus get used more often than not. So like a zercher squat isn't a bad exercise, but it has less utility than a barbell squat, demonstrably, in most cases. That's not to say it doesn't have particular instances where it doesn't work better than a squat, but just the same with fasting. Like you said, I really like uh, employing it if I am restricting my calories. I never have to go super low on calories. Like I documented my whole cutting journey and I only went to like 2,600 calories at the lowest. But still, like when I got down to those low body fat stages where I was like honestly below 10% body fat, delaying my first meal until like 2 p.m., really did wonders for me in terms of just being able to feel like I'm eating more throughout the day. Um, a lot of that I like to employ just by having a meal that's like carb and fat heavy right before bed so that when I get up and I train earlier in the morning, I'm not necessarily training fasted, you know what I mean? So I'll do like a fasted workout where like my last meal was like at 12 a.m. and I go to bed and wake up and then train at like 11 a.m. That's what I like to do. Now I like it for that purpose. In terms of like longer fasting, like the 24, 48, 72, I think those are good for mental acuity if you're someone that finds, you know, any sort of benefit in like the, like the dedication that you have to have to do something like that. Cause I'm gonna be honest with you. I could do that if I forced myself to do so, but there are a lot of ways that I like to demonstrate and build mental toughness that don't involve, involve like depriving myself of calories. Um, pick a way that you can do that. Um, I don't think that it has to be the only way that you can do that, but like I said, it is a viable option. I don't dislike fasting. I know I've said that fasting is trash in the comments, but for my purposes, which are building performance, building muscle, allowing your body to recover, giving your body the building blocks to recover and to grow. I think it's trash, but it's really good in a lot of other ways. It's just the same as like a stationary bike. It's trash for building muscle. You, you built no muscle doing that, but it's really excellent in a lot of other ways that makes it really worthwhile doing, just the same with fasting. And then of course, for religious purposes, I have infinite respect for that. Um, do you personally weigh yourself consistently and or set specific weight goals? Um, or weight specific goals, that's a little different than the first one. Um, yeah, I'll usually weigh myself every couple of days just to make sure that I'm either gaining weight or just to see if I'm maintaining my weight. I think that's something you should do while you're bulking just to make sure that the needle's moving in the right direction and it's not moving too far in one direction or the other. 
if you're consistently weighing the same when you're in a calorie surplus, it just means that you know your non-exercise activities either gone up, your active activity levels either gone up, or you know you're just not in a surplus. So that's where you start to progressively overload your calories. So for that extent, that's something that I really like to do. But I'm not one of those people where like I really care per se how much I weigh in any given moment more so just to ensure that I'm in a nice quality calorie surplus. But in terms of how I just judge that in general, you could be gaining weight and then like lean tissue and then like be losing water. And there's a bunch of other different factors that can contribute to your weight not really changing when you are in fact gaining lean body mass and fat or whatever. I always look at my training. So am I recovering session to session? Am I hitting my scheduled progressions? so on like is my training high quality when you train bulked and when you train like cut and super lean you feel the difference between the two like training when you're cut and training while you're in a calorie surplus feel a lot different so that's something that i i use uh more often i would say or or put a, a higher priority in in my opinion because the quality of your training is going to dictate you know whether you're gaining quality weight or, or not for one and then for two, if you are having that really high quality training, it's a good chance to turn a surplus, especially if you've experienced what it feels like to be in a cut and not be making any gains. Excellent question. Eric G. Is there any food that you consider to be almost magical in terms of health benefits, macros, etc.? And then do you prefer hot or cold beverages? So I don't really consider any food choice to be magical. I guess if you mean by like, is there a particular food or food group that I just tend to enjoy and tend to include more often than not, I would say, I'd hate to sound like a fucking uh, normie, but just rice, like basmati rice, you know what I mean? Like it's a very versatile carb. I also really like potatoes, but there's nothing really magical about them. I guess for potatoes, you could say that they're like half as calorically dense as rice. So if you're someone that has a big appetite, that's a really good carb option for you. Um, something that will help you guys out a lot that may seem magical if you're having digestive issues is just making sure that you're getting a really high quality probiotic to just like increase your gut health to allow you to digest your food and not feel like you have a fucking, uh, the fuck is that shit that witches stir fucking potions in a cauldron you don't have a fucking bubbling cauldron in your stomach you know you're digesting your food and then that'll allow you to stay in a calorie surplus because that's something that you often see with guys when they're bulking so this is something that people don't really talk about but some people are very intolerant to a lot of the shit that is just common in the american diet or the western diet and they don't know it and it especially becomes prevalent when they're on a calorie surplus, they start eating and they're increasing the amount of food that they eat. And it just ain't digesting the way it should. So they start to feel like shit and they get irritable bowel syndrome and then the bulk is terminated, gains destroyed. Get that probiotic in there, that'll help you a lot of you guys out. That's not medical advice, it's just you know my personal experience. Consult with a doctor and a dietitian. Next is, do you prefer hot or cold beverages? I prefer hot beverages overall. Um, I really like a cold lemonade, but it's, it's cold where I live more often than not. So it's very scantily, uh, it's, it, it's not very often that I enjoy drinking something fucking cold when it's freezing. It's colder than the witch's tit outside. Um, so just in general, I like hot beverages. So like black coffee, black tea. Next question, what are your favorite foods? How often do you eat takeout versus cooking at home? And what does a Giga sandwich look like? So the, the Giga sandwich, um, for those that aren't aware of it, just, there's a video on my channel that shows me making the Giga sandwich. It's just basically a calorically dense sandwich that I make for my woman sometimes just because she's one of those people that doesn't eat until four in the afternoon so when she does eat it needs to be a calorically dense meal just to make sure that she's hitting her uh, calorie targets it just includes like buffalo chicken uh, turkey breast garlic toast for bread cheese and then you like you fry a lot of the stuff in whatever oil you like we use butter she likes butter um, it's a really solid sandwich i also put turkey bacon on it 
A Giga sandwich is just that though. Like it, it's just a big ass fucking sandwich that has a lot of calories in it. So my favorite foods are, I like Mediterranean foods. So anything in that category, I like Japanese food, authentic Japanese food, Indian food I really like. Um, just in terms of like day-to-day -day things that I make, like I said, I make rice. I've been making cheesy rice often. So I'll make a big pot of uh, basmati rice and then put like the avocado oil in it so it doesn't, you know, it, it stays granular. I'll put chopped up garlic in it, onions, all the seasoning and some fixing and some herbs and things like that. And then I'll have my protein of choice with it and then whatever roasted vegetable. And I like roasting my vegetables in the oven until they have a little char to them. It just gives them a nice flavor and a nice check texture. It gives a lot of food volume. I'm one of those people where like, I don't necessarily have a large appetite per se, like I don't get extreme hunger pangs, but I can always eat more, you know what I mean? I enjoy eating. There's, there's not a limit to how much food I can eat for the most part, like reasonably so. Like I could eat 4,000 calories, 5,000 calories a day and it not be an issue if that's what I have to do. And then how often do you eat takeout versus cooking at home? So this is something that uh, we need to work on in my household is fucking ordering Uber Eats all the fucking time. But we eat out, I would say about 30% of the time. So about 70% of the time we're cooking at home, having home cooked meals. I'd like for it to be 80, 20, but we're not bad because the average American, average Western civilian fan they eat out like half the time or more than half the time or don't fucking cook at home at all. They have empty fridges. What the fuck do you have a fridge for if you're not gonna cook anything? That's another video. Okay, so this is not necessarily, well it is a question, but it starts off with an impression. So my impression on you so far has been that you're not very strict with your diet all the time. Is your diet generally rich in micros or do you supplement it or you didn't, do you not bother at all? So. It really depends upon what you mean by strict, bro. So I commonly eat like a bag of fucking vegetables a day. I eat nice whole foods like rice, nice lean meats. Um, you know what I'm saying? Cheese. I, I eat a pretty well-balanced diet in general. If by strict, do you mean do I eat the same thing every day? I eat the same like for like subcategory of things if that makes sense like i'll have a few different things that i just eat in rotation but it's not really the same thing every day um, i think that's kind of the balance that you need to strike between like fucking meal prep containers full of the same thing that i'm going to eat all week and then just adding a little flexibility to that so for example i make a big pot of rice and i'll have rice every day but i'm going to have some sort of different sauce to accommodate that rice or put cheese in it one day or use a different meat, or fry the rice with some egg and the protein and the vegetables, whatever the case may be. That's how I stay consistent and make sure that the calories are relatively the same with like minor alterations while giving different flavor profiles. So that's something that for people that have trouble with consistency, make consistency easy. You're using the same ingredients, it's just different fucking additives that you're adding to it. That's probably a bad word because it's not unhealthy, but like different additions that you're adding to like your basic foundational stuff. It's like with training, bro. Like my training program for the most part since last year doesn't look very different in terms of like the main exercises, but a lot of the accessories rotate depending upon what I feel like doing, what I need. Same thing with cooking. It's whatever you feel like eating versus what you need. And then in terms of supplementation, um, I take creatine probably not as often as I should. Maybe like every, out of every week, I might take it five days. It's not one of those things where like I'm really overly concerned about it just because it's a very transient benefit anyway. I mean, it's not like a performance enhancing and drug, enhancing drug. It might add like a rep or two. Basically, it gives you a little bit of extra stamina. That's all. And helps you retain some water. My boy Helmet. I don't know if I said your name right, bro, but please correct me on that. I like knowing how to pronounce names from different cultures properly. But they ask, how many hours maximum between meals, regardless of bulking or cutting? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, bro. I appreciate your positivity. Um, 
that's, you know, that's highly individual and I don't want to just leave it at that just because that's not very helpful. So I'll give you some food for thought. How you space your meals should just depend upon a few factors in my opinion, in my experience. So you should look at how many total calories you're trying to eat and are you someone where if you don't eat until later in the day that you're not going to be able to meet that calorie goal? Are you someone that gets hungry frequently? And do you enjoy eating above average or below average? So if you're someone where you typically tend to get hungry more often and you like eating, space it out accordingly. So that might be every couple hours, but most importantly, I think that in terms of meal timing, there's no like anabolic window or anything like that. But in my opinion, I do think that like having a good pre-workout meal that's like fast digesting carbs and some fats is gonna be really beneficial. You're using the fuel of whatever you ate last night and I'm not disregarding the science behind that, but it's just provable fact that if you have a pre-workout meal that digests reasonably quickly, that it's gonna give you some additional energy to get up and go to the gym and perform better. Um, and then just the same, I do think that eating shortly after you train is beneficial as well, just because you tend, well, I tend to be, just be hungry. I'm not saying there's an anabolic window per se, but like your hunger is gonna be fucking higher after a workout. So. But other than that, just space them accordingly. This is a good nuanced question. So we're gonna go through a few more, but this is a good nuanced question. So does being in a calorie surplus at the time of working out improve performance? For example, you could be working a physically demanding job and then eating breakfast beforehand. You burn off the calories while you're, you know, you're working and it puts you in a deficit for that time period and then you go straight to the gym after. So, when I was cutting, something that I would do was I would have, you know, if I was feeling beat up and I just didn't want to take like a, uh, a refeed day or whatever, I would eat something that was very calorically dense and had a lot of sodium in it, like sodium and potassium. I'd have some uh, bananas and shit with it as well. That would put me in a big surplus for that time period right around when I was training. And that would improve the quality of my sessions to like the best extent that it could be. So you could just follow that logic accordingly. You would wanna have, you know, the most caffeine and calories and sodium or whatever for the time period that you need to be most active, both physically and mentally. So that's definitely a good strategy that you could employ. Um, Sam Sheether wants to know my fruit tier list. So <laughs> that is a, uh, so just to be honest with you, when I go shopping, like the only fruit that we fucking buy for the most part is bananas and peaches. So those are S tier in my opinion, like bananas and peaches are S tier, grapes are A tier, apples are B tier, pears are actually better than apples in my opinion, bro. Like they're better than apples just because they have a better texture and a better bite. Um, watermelon is C tier and mango is A tier. Pineapple is S tier too, but we just don't get that as often just because it's not always in stock, but that's kind of how it breaks down. I'm more of a uh, get your micros through vegetables guy, quite honestly. So a vegetable tier list would be like a little more comprehensive just because I tend to eat a little bit more vegetables than fruits. All right, so the last question is gonna be more of like a, a little mini bro talk just because I feel like I need to give uh, our brother a little bit of perspective just to keep his head in the game. So they asked, why does the face get so puffy when bulking even though my body fat isn't really changing that much? I have gained 0.2 kilograms over three re weeks of bulking my face has become noticeably more puffy and my jawline is disappearing. So I'm not a psychoanalyst or anything like that, but I'm very perceptive and I, I read between the lines with the way people communicate to me a lot. And I have empathy for you because there are a lot of gentlemen that, you know, have this mindset when it comes to bulking and being lean and everything like that. So you've gained 0.2 kilograms. That's how much is that in the fucking pounds? So 0.2 times 2.2, it's not even half a pound of body weight. A fraction of that is fat. A fraction of that is water. So you've gained not even a pound 
of just overall weight and you feel like in the course of three weeks, so that's imperceptible week to week, and you feel like you've, you're, you fucked your jawline, like you, it's just gone and your face is fat and puffy. I am going to just tell you that that is impossible, that didn't happen. What may be possible is that you're maybe eating foods that are a little higher in sodium and you're drinking a little bit more water and that's just making your face feel like it's puffy as you continue to eat throughout the day. The same shit happens to me. My jawline is chiseled, you know what I'm saying? But like, depending upon what I eat, I'll be like, damn, I fucking feel fat. It's, it's just impossible to get fat in three weeks, especially if you've only gained less than a half a pound of overall weight. I think that you're someone that maybe, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but you're really attached to your aesthetics you're very attached to the way that your face looks. You're very attached to a lot of the things that come with being leaner. Um, and you're scared to lose those things because of all the things that you've heard on social media saying that like you're fat if you don't have abs. You're not worthy if you don't have a chiseled jawline. Here's the thing, man. A lot of the people that tell you those things, they're fucking betas, to be honest with you. Like there are men out here that don't feel like they're men unless they put themselves above someone else and put others down, you know what I mean? So I won't say any names. I've bemoaned my opinions on individuals on the internet, just in general. I'm not gonna do that right now. We all know who they are, but try to tell yourself that logically, I cannot get fat in three weeks if I've only gained half of a pound. If you're on like a 200 calorie surplus, which is probably what you're running, if you've not even gained a pound a week, it's probably just water weight, to be honest with you. You might not even be in a surplus. Let yourself eat a little bit more and tell yourself that I can be in a surplus for an entire month and I'm still not gonna get fat. I can be in a surplus for four months and I'm still not gonna fat. I've, gonna be, I've been in a calorie surplus for the better part of four and a half months now. I still have abs, my face is still lean, I'm still lean in general. Now, granted, I started bulking from a lower body fat percentage than you more than likely, but just to say that if you looked one way at the start of your bulk, you're not gonna look totally different three weeks from now. It's impossible. You're not gonna look totally different three months from now. Especially not with someone like you that I know for a fact, this just doesn't work out mathematically. You have not been in, in a very big surplus. It's just not reality. So stop looking at yourself, overanalyzing the way that you look every day, because I know that that's something that you more than likely do as well. And just try to enjoy eating more food, enjoy progressing in your training, and just know that like, dude, you ain't gonna get fucking fat. You can get up to 20% body fat and What's, what's a big fucking natural besides uh, Jeffrey Verity Schofield that's 20% body fat right now? I can't think of very many, but you can be up to 20% body fat and you'll still look good, man. Like, you can still even potentially have abs, you know what I mean? Now, also know when it's time to stop bulking. So I would say, give yourself an objective measure of when to stop. So say you wanna put on 20 pounds over the course of a year. When you reach that 20 pound threshold, regardless of the way you feel like you look, just cut and just look at it logically. That's how I look at it. So I don't look at necessarily the way that I look so much as, okay, have I hit my strength goals? Am I the weight that I wanted to end up with at my bulk in accordance with those strength goals? If I'm not, I'm going to keep bulking. I, you know what I'm saying? Now, also, when I hit those goals, I'll be like, okay, it's time to cut. And you cut as quickly as possible. That's the giggle bulking piece that we've talked about. But, bro, you're not fucking fat. That has been the Q&A uh, for this week. Excellent Q&A. We're going to have a live Q&A, uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, the 19th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Come through. We're going to answer a bunch of questions. It's going to be lit. I'll see you all later.